channel. So today we're going to be talking about ferrets. Ferrets. And if you're like me, you do a lot of research before getting a new animal. And that is exactly what I did with, before I got Patsu. And I highly recommend that you do this before getting a ferret. There's a lot of little things that I didn't know about until owning my own ferret and until talking to people who currently own ferrets. So some things have definitely changed and I just wanted to make like a big video that everyone who whoever's interested in ferrets can look back on. There's a lot of conflicting information when it comes to ferrets and there's a lot of things that I didn't even know about before going into it and I do extensive research. I read books, articles, videos. I make binders and folders. I make sure everything, I know everything before I get into something because I understand that animals are a commitment and Ferrets, for example, can live up to nine years if you're lucky, even more than that, but I haven't heard that in a while. Um, so you really need to be prepared to be able to care for these little guys um, for the next few years. So <laughs> he's being very good right now. <laughs> first things first, I want to start off with the history of a ferret briefly. They are a part of the Mustelidae, Mustelidae family, which includes sea otters, badgers, mink. The word ferret derives from a Latin word meaning thief. It's very fitting. If you've ever had a ferret, you will know what I'm talking about. And definitely check to see if your state allows ferrets. A lot of places, well not a lot of places, there are a few places that ferrets are actually illegal to keep. And there are a few reasons why that is, but they're all kind of stupid reasons. But that is true, so you want to make sure that you're not breaking any laws. For example, Hawaii and California, ferrets are not legal to own there, and uh, New York City as well. So definitely check on your laws. You may need a permit or some sort of license. In my area, you don't, so you could just go pick one of these guys up. I wanted to touch on, and I want this to be a big part of this video that you take from this because it's not something that I really knew about before getting Patsu, and if I did, I wouldn't have necessarily probably gotten him because of, um, it's kind of really sad to talk about and it makes me a little emotional, but I wanted to touch on a little bit about where our, the majority of our ferrets in the United States come from, and it's a place called Marshall Farms, and Marshall Farms is a ferret mill, so think about a puppy mill, but with ferrets. It is an absolutely disgusting, horrid place, and I wouldn't wish any animal to be a part of it. They sell ferrets for testing purposes. Yes, people do test on these little guys um, for breeding them for the pet stores. They have tattoos in their ears, so they have two dots in their ears. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to... You can't even see his because he's so fluffy right now, but that's how you can tell if your ferret's a martial ferret and they tend to not live as long uh, over like bred ferrets by people because it's just the conditions are absolutely terrible. And I have a quote here from the Marshall website that says, that they boast that their ferrets are free of clinical and subclinical infection of most pathogens, including um, giardia and ear mites and all that stuff, which is not true. <laughs> As you may know, Patsu did come to me with giardia and Howell had ear mites, so yeah, that's kind of wrong. If you Google Marshall Farms, you won't see any images of the inside, and there's a reason for that. I think there's an overhead picture I'll put in this video if I can find it. It just looks like a big factory farm and PETA did do an inside investigation of a very similar facility and there were babies falling from their cages getting rolled over by the employees the moms were shown holding their babies and just circling and circling 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 the cages they are absolutely miserable it is disgusting and I will link down that article and video down below and I really encourage you to watch it even though it is absolutely terrible um, just to educate yourself because it's really important to know this and you may be asking how can I ethically adopt a ferret then if most of the United States ferrets come from Marshall Farms well 
definitely check on Facebook, like local Facebook ferret groups. I have one in my area and they are posting ferrets every week on there. People are looking to rehome because they are just uneducated when they purchase these guys. Ferrets are extremely high maintenance, <laughs> extremely high maintenance. They are not like a hamster. They require a lot of money, time and care and uh, training as well. So many people don't know this because the pet stores don't really educate their um, customers and they just kind of try to get the sale, move on with their lives. They don't screen you, they don't ask you questions because you know they don't care. They don't care. At the store, ferrets can go from anywhere between $150 to $300, depending on the age, time of year that you're getting them, and what supplies you may need as well. Because I assume when you go get a ferret, you may need to buy some stuff as well, so it makes it a little bit more expensive. Also, stay away from Craigslist, because a lot of those ferrets have unknown health histories, and you don't want to be taking on, you don't want your first ferret to be a ferret that you don't know the history of, because it can become a huge medical expense right off the bat. Although, if you get a ferret from a pet store like I did because I didn't know any better, they may also have really expensive medical bills that um, you don't even know about because Marshall Farms boasts very healthy ferrets and that's not always the case. The majority of ferrets that you can get at the pet stores are already altered and descented, meaning they're already spayed and neutered and they had their glands removed so they don't kind of spray like a skunk does. And this is incredibly important because if you get somehow, I don't know how you would obtain one in the US, you'd have to go through a breeder, private breeder, which there are not many in the United States, I'll tell you that right now. If you get a unaltered female, you will need to either get something done for them before they go into heat or they can severely have issues if you don't do that and they go into heat and they don't get pregnant. So it's very important that this is done. There are really no temperament differences between males and females, altered males and females. They both have the capability of being super sweet, docile, friendly critters. I like to think that it all depends on the lifestyle, their diet, and how they're being raised. Patsu and Howl are two altered males and they get along just fine. They are super, super sweet. Howl's a little nippier and feisty and Patsu is really docile and subdued. So I want this next section of this video to be a big part because it is very very important and that is diet so ferrets have very specific dietary needs and I will go over those and talk a little bit about the most popular kibble brands and other methods of feeding that people choose to do so I'll tell you the minimal nutritional needs of a ferret are as follows 32 to 40 percent meat based protein this is extremely important 15 to 20 percent fat and 2 to 3 percent fiber you don't want to a lot of fiber. <laughs> they don't need those extra fruits, veggies, and grains and other binders in their kibbles. It's just not good. And this is why a lot of people choose not to feed ferret marketed kibbles because they're just still full of grains and veggies, stuff that ferrets really don't need. And they are obligate carnivores just like your cats are. So they have very similar needs as far as like taurine goes and meat. They need meat, meat, meat. So it's <laughs> I'll talk more about that in a second with a raw diet. But um, I'll tell you a little bit about, so Marshall Farms does have their own premium ferret food line and they highly recommend that you feed this food. Every pet store employee that I've met recommends this food. My first vet that I went to recommends this food and this food is absolute garbage. It is the absolute minimum, but many people use it and many people do have success with it. But is their ferret thriving? No. So it's very important, you know, to make sure that our ferrets have a good quality of life and their diet plays a huge part in this. So for example, the premium ferret kibble by Marshall Farms has 38% protein, 18% fat, 3.5% fiber. That's pretty much the bare minimum. When a better brand such as Wysong Digestive Support, I used to feed the Wysong Epigen 90 Digestive Support until my ferrets kept getting constant diarrhea, so I took them off of that and, and put them onto raw instead. That analysis includes 62% protein, which is a pretty big jump from 38%, 16% fat, a little on the lower side, and 5% fiber, a little higher. Um, so these two brands are fed often, also in conjunction with a couple different kibbles. If you feed kibble, it's definitely a great idea to mix kibbles so that if one kibble brand goes out of 
stock which happens a lot or they stop producing it your ferret still has a couple different brands that he that you can rely on and um, every ferret pretty much under a year old has the capability of imprinting on their food which means they will only eat this one food so that's why a lot of people find it hard to transition them to something else but I definitely recommend still trying if they're being fed something like low quality because it's still it's worth it in the end it's worth the time and the hassle and it is possible all right so my next section here is feeding raw this is extremely important and I really hope that you consider this if you're going to be getting a ferret. It is not as difficult as it seems. You should just do a lot of research, create a like a meal plan that you follow every week and it's super easy. I'm a vegetarian so I had no experience preparing meat or cutting it, storing it, nothing like that. So it was a huge change for me, but I'm really happy that I did it. And I want to touch on the fact that many vets are very against, not very against, they're, they won't, you know, tell you to feed raw because they are aware of the dangers of feeding it incorrectly. It is so important that you feed a raw diet correctly and make sure that the measurements are correct and the amount of certain proteins and organs and bones are all correct or else it can be bad. <laughs> Ferrets are designed to thrive on this diet and many vets don't recommend it, again, because People will just go, oh yeah, I can just throw him a piece of cooked chicken every now and then, maybe a couple eggs, maybe some ground beef, but that's not, you know, it's got to be, it's, there's a very specific way you need to do it. So I will link down some good resources as far as that goes. I highly recommend checking out the Holistic Ferret Forum. They help me a lot and they have a mentoring program that they did put on pause for right now um, to help you transition your ferrets onto raw. I buy my meat and eggs straight from the supermarket. It can be expensive, but Raw feeders will usually say that you can potentially avoid very expensive vet bills down the line because you will be avoiding things like insulinoma, um, but I mean they can still get it obviously, but it's not, you know, it's kind of hard when they don't have starch in their diet to develop insulinoma. Alright, my next section is treats, the good and the bad. If your ferret's on a very high quality diet, they won't need supplements or treats. Anything like marketed for ferrets is usually not good. <laughs> you, that's something you should take away from this video. Anything like marketed for a certain animal Animal isn't always good for them. So for example, things like bandit treats and bones, which my ferrets love, but it's just so bad for them, uh, especially furrotone and ferret bite, that stuff is garbage, absolute garbage. So if you look at the ingredients, here, I'm going to go, I actually have their ferret bite because I was going to use it to help clean their nails, but they don't like it. <laughs> so I'll show you the ingredients on that. All right, so I have the ferret bite right here. I actually forgot that I had this, but this is what it looks like, and a lot of people use this or a similar type paste. So let me just read off some of the ingredients, and you can probably tell me why this would be bad. So ingredients include malt syrup, corn oil, let's see what else is in here, molasses, it's not very good. So yeah, the first ingredient is malt syrup, and this is supposed to be a vitamin paste. So, and these, the dangerous part about these is they are marketed as daily supplements. Do not use these ever. Not daily, not weekly, not monthly. Don't use these. A better alternative to this would be salmon oil. So like what I have here by Wild Alaskan. This is much healthier, but again, I don't use it that often and my ferrets don't really like it that much. Again, if your ferret is fed a very nutritious diet, they won't need any of these extras, but it's nice to treat them once in a while if they're being good. And if you're trying to litter train them, it's easy uh, if you have some sort of reward for them, but you can use raw food for that if you don't mind getting your hands dirty. All right, so my next section, bathing, nail clipping, ear cleaning, and teeth brushing. This is These are all things that need to be done aside from the bathing, but I'll talk more about that. So bathing should only be done when absolutely needed. Shampoos can strip their natural oils, which ferrets are very, very oily, musky, smelly critters, so they really need that. Um, and when you strip it away, it actually does the opposite of what you want. The ferret's skin goes into overdrive, and they just produce more oils, and it makes them itchier, and makes them smellier, and makes them more oily. So it's like, why did you even bathe them in the first place if it's just going to do the opposite of what you want? So what I do is, every time I have them like go outside and they dig in the garden, I will take them inside into the shower because they don't like baths, they like to be in the shower. <laughs> um, just rinse them off with water and then wipe them down with a towel. That's all I do. Sometimes um, because they will 
lick themselves a lot after they get bathed. I will rub a little coconut oil on their fur so that when they lick up their hair, it slides down easier because they are prone to getting hairballs when they're licking themselves too much and during shedding season. Nail clipping is extremely important. When I got my ferrets, I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'll clip their nails when they get, you know, too long. But no, it's actually incredibly important that you do this on a, a weekly basis because, and I learned this the hard way, I had trimmed Patsu's nails and I must have not done it short enough because they, one of them got caught on something and broke and I had to take him to the vet and I was so nervous that they were going to have to surgically remove his nail and it was just a big mess. So just keep them trimmed and keep them, don't, don't hit the quick of their nail. And you can see the quick, it's like bright red in their nail. Some things that people do to help during nail trimming, if you have a really squirmy ferret, is they'll put like ferret bite, although I would only use it in that situation, um, on their belly. So they just lick their belly, they lick their belly, and then you can clip their nails. Or something that works for me is I grab them right when they're napping and I'll just clip them really quick because for like how it takes them a while to wake up so I can really get it done then. Ear cleaning must be done often. Check for ear mites. Every time you go to the vet, have the vet check for ear mites. Teeth brushing should not be overlooked either. They can have dental issues just like your dogs or your cats. Keep an eye on them, brush them weekly. Although if you feed a raw diet, you don't have to worry about it because the bones that they eat in their diet will naturally just take away all that plaque and all that stuff. Next section, sleep schedule. So ferrets sleep a lot and babies sleep even more. So usually they sleep about 14 to 20 hours a day, not continuously, of course, um, throughout the day in like little short sections. I find it extremely important to give them a very good sleeping space. Hammocks, sleeping, um, like little, uh, what do you call them? Sleeping sacks blankets, beds. My ferrets don't like to sleep in hammocks. <laughs> they are um, used to the luxury way of living, so they sleep on cat beds that are covered in blankets. My ferrets most favorite thing to sleep on are my clothes that I wore the day prior. <laughs> it's really cute. They love to cuddle up in my clothes. Give them a dark, secluded area to sleep because ferrets in the wild sleep in burrows, so it's nice to try to mimic that. All right, so now we're gonna talk about playtime, which is super fun. It's very hard to just have one ferret because you are their sole caretaker. They rely completely on you for their entertainment, companionship, all that. So it's much easier if you have two or more because they keep themselves occupied throughout the day. Now that doesn't mean that you can just leave them be. You should be interacting with them every single day. Yeah, ferrets typically prefer to play with their kind because they can be super, super rough. If you ever watch ferrets play, they're always making noises, they're biting. Patsu and Howl, they always have like little scabs on their neck because of their teeth. Um, they play super, super rough. So the general rule of thumb for a ferret is make sure that they have four hours minimum outside of the cage every single day. That doesn't have to be continuous. It can be as long as it just adds up to four hours. A lot, many people that you talk to will say the four hours is the minimum and I I definitely agree. Even if you have three ferrets, they need to be outside the cage for four hours. And I want to say, dedicate at least an hour or more to them, interacting with them every day. All right, so many toys are considered unsafe for ferrets. Anything with rubber or like little noses or beady eyes that can pop off and they can swallow. Uh, anything with like fur, anything that they can swallow really. The only super, super safe, I would say, toys for unsupervised play would be like ping pong balls or jingle balls, um, but they aren't as fun. So I'll show you some things that I have. Some safe toys, like um, a lot of kids toys can be pretty safe. Like this is just hard plastic and um, even if they chew on it, nothing's really gonna come off. But again, that depends on how destructive your ferrets are. Mine are not destructive, so um, they can get away with using stuff like this. Um, I have a bunch of jingle balls that Howell really likes. Um, this thing. And like soft toys, they don't really like that much, so they don't. I don't have to worry about them chewing up. But anything with stuffing, just be careful. Anything with a squeaker. So I get usually cat toys because ferret marketed toys, one, there's not a lot of them, and two, they're super boring. I've got to say though, Patsu's favorite toys are beheaded uh, Barbie dolls. So he likes the heads of them <laughs> and littlest pet shops he likes and then stuffed mice he will stash them as well and i don't have to worry about him chewing them up because he just wants to keep them safe in his little den so 
Now, many ferrets love a dig box. You can make one out of rice, but if you use rice, make sure it's not instant rice um, or beans, something like that, but definitely only use that during supervised playtime. You can take your ferrets outside, but please keep them on a leash unless you have a super strong bond. Even if you have a super strong bond, anything can happen that would spook them, and they are super, super fast when they get spooked. So if they run off into the forest, like, sorry, you don't have a ferret anymore, you know? It's just better to have your pet on leash. So next section, cage requirements. So don't waste your time looking at cages for ferrets. Just buy the Double Ferret Nation or Double Critter Nation. I believe it's the same sort of cage. The Double Ferret Nation is the best ferret cage out there, I swear to God. Like, it is amazing. Super easy to clean. Um, my two ferrets fit perfectly fine in there and they love it. I've tried many cages and I've looked at many cages and nothing compares. Next section is vet care and vaccines. You should be taking your ferrets to the vet quite often. If you don't have a good exotic vet in your area, don't get a ferret. Trust me, it'll be hell trying to get, like trying to find good medical care if your ferret really needs it um, when, if that time were to come. They are considered exotic animals, so many normal vets that do dogs and cats won't service them. And I have a vet right down the road me like right around the corner and it would be super convenient if I could take it to them take my ferrets to them they do service ferrets but they were very open about they don't see very many of them and therefore they don't have like the top quality um, care and information for them so you will the vets will be pretty open with you about that so make sure that even if a vet is considered a exotic friendly vet it, they won't they they may not be the best option so my main vet is like a 30 minute drive away which is pretty inconvenient but it's worth it to get the good care from them because they know what they're talking about different states have different laws when it comes to vaccines so definitely do your research and please do your research about vaccines as well um, a lot of ferrets tend to uh, get reactions with vaccines especially the distemper vaccine just because there's they have to use like a cat or a dog a uh, distemper vaccine and sometimes the dose if the dose is a little off it could be bad so a lot of vets will give your ferret benadryl before the administration and they recommend that you stay in the vet office for a little while afterwards to make sure that they don't have a reaction they are so prone to everything and they can also catch the flu so <laughs> if you're sick be careful handling them um, avoid use of candles and incense. It can really mess with their uh, noses and their respiratory. Again, I want to touch on they are super high maintenance. They're not like a hamster um, where she really don't really need to take to the vet that much. You only really need to, you know, interact with it for like a half hour a day. They're not that. They require so much more. They're kind of like a permanent kitten. So they, they constantly need your attention. They're always getting into trouble and stealing things that they shouldn't. And um, I'm a part of a lot of ferret forum communities online and I see a lot of questions um, by newbies and it's usually like super frantic questions like my ferret bites and my ferret doesn't poop in the litter box and that happens ferrets will bite and they can bite and they can break skin and it can hurt a lot you have to go through bite training you have to go through litter training if you want and even if you go through litter training it's not a guarantee that they're going to use their litter box my boys went through litter training and they don't use the litter box anymore uh, Patsu went through bite training stopped biting in two weeks never bites. Howl unfortunately has taken a little bit longer so that's definitely something to keep in mind. If you have small children don't get a ferret. If um, you have a lot of people in your house and you won't have you know time to dedicate to the ferret don't get a ferret. Um, it's too many times are they returned back to the stores and they're rehomed because people don't understand what they're getting into. Pet store employees are not properly educating them before they get them and they just kind of you know want to sell the current batch that they have so they can get another batch in of babies. So that's all that they're really, you know, thinking of. And I don't want, you know, pet store employees to come at me and say, oh, we're not like that at my store. Like, okay, sure, sure. But main, most of the time, pet store employees are not the best resources. I love my ferrets. I love them so much. They are so loving and they make really, really great companions if you're up for the challenge of maintaining them and um, ensuring that they really get the best care. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful and not too rambly. And I'll also link a bunch of different really great resources as well for you to enjoy. I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you. Bye.